Hello, I'm John Wilwack, COO of Superman Compliance Services. I'm here with Joe Scavetti today, who is a director and chief compliance officer in our core compliance practice. One of the most important things is to ensure an exam staff has a clear understanding of your business and how it is portrayed to the stakeholders of your firm. Examiners tend to build preliminary assumptions about your business based off regulatory disclosures, websites, and other information you may have provided to them ahead of time. Then they will focus their attention on areas with, that they believe for, require further examination or sometimes focus on areas where their experience is. One way to ensure the examiners are seeing the firm through the eyes of management is for the firm executives to take them through a high level presentation of the firm's business. This can also allow the, the exam staff to refocus on the true risks of your business as you lay it out in your strategy. Joe, can you talk about how firms can present their business to regulatory examiners? Certainly, John. So one of the keys to a smooth exam experience is, is clear, concise description of your firm at the outset. So the examiners uh, can clearly understand your business. One of the things that can derail an exam uh, experience is when there's a misunderstanding or a misinterpretation of a, of how you conduct your business or what your business is involved with. Uh, so prior to the exam, uh, firms should understand that examiners have looked through the firm's public face. They've reviewed your websites, they've reviewed your public disclosures such as your form ADV, customer relationship summary, form PF, any sort of public documents that you filed with it. And they've taken and, and have understood or at least interpreted how your firm operates. If you prepare a comprehensive business summary to start the exam, you can help control how the examiners will understand your business. Uh, you can clarify any sort of misunderstandings that they may have uh, or provide further clarity into, into certain aspects of your business. So Joe, we get asked all the time, our engagement teams get asked, um, some of us get asked as CCOs for our clients, what topics should we be including in this presentation? And should we have a, a slide deck prepared or enhanced that, like the ones that we use with our potential clients or prospects that we have out there? When you prepare your business strategy presentation, you have to keep in mind that the examiners aren't customers. They're the regulators of your industry. So, so the presentation should not be constructed as if it's a sales call. Um, you want to keep it factual. You want to be extra careful to stay away from any type of competitive or superlative language uh, or anything where you're highlighting your unique approach. The presentation uh, should be an overall business overview. Uh, one thing you could start is who the firm is and how it's, and how it's structured. Uh, include key items such as any type of financial affiliations, holding companies, uh, if you have multiple branches, uh, examiners are looking for potential conflicts, uh, conflicts of interest within the business. Uh, you'll most certainly need to discuss ownership structure, but you want to be careful not to make it overly complex if you have an overly complex holding structure, because that can lead to more misunderstanding. Be prepared to answer sort of what types of protections and information barriers are in place uh, among your affiliations. Uh, because this will be one of the areas the examiners will, will focus in on. Also, you want to identify the key individuals and discuss the supervisory structure, demonstrating that the firm has a strong hold of its operations. Uh, conversely, if you have a loose supervised structure where everything is flat, there's no checks and balances, that can lead to more questions from the examiners in terms of that. Uh, examiners are looking to see that the firm has an overall culture of compliance and want to know how that's enforced. The other types of things you want to make sure you list are the types of products that you're offering. Are they registered funds, are SMAs, private funds? Different types of investment products have different types of investment risks that the, and that the examiners are going to want to focus on. Uh, understanding the types of products that you manage should exist the examiners in deciphering the information that they get when they provide you with a document request list. Also include the types of investments that you have 
uh, within these types of products? Is it equities, fixed income, derivative products? Uh, keep any sort of presentation of your investment strategy simple. If, you, if, if it appears overly complicated to the examiners, they're gonna question whether or not your investors have the ability to fully understand how they're investing. So aside from the information that may be about your structure or some of the disclosures that you've already made, what are some of the other types of information the examiners will be looking for? Sure. They not only want to understand the type of management your firm does, but how you go about it and to whom you market it. Make sure your presentation addresses these topics to help focus the examination on the relevant issues and the risks in the business. Identify to whom do you market your services? Is it retail investors, institution, or other investment advisors? Different client bases have different risks. And understanding the sophistication level of your client base may help focus the examiners on the risk commensurate with your clientele. But be prepared to discuss how you communicate with your clients. Also discuss how you market these programs whether you're marketing directly to client or do you have sub-advisory relationships, uh, participate in RAP programs, uh, do you have third parties uh, or internal salespeople that do the marketing for this? Examiners are again interested in who's marketing and selling your products to your clients and ask how they're compensated. Uh, you know, so be prepared how you're supervising your activities for these people who are marketing your products. And then third, outline how your firm is compensated. Uh, the SEC is interested in, uh, you know, discuss the fee structure of the accounts. Is it asset-based, compensation-based? Um, they're also interested, uh, particularly interested in any sort of revenue sharing arrangements that you have. And if you're a private fund advisor, you'll want to outline any performance-based uh, compensation or any compensation you may receive, such as portfolio company service fees. Examiners, again, are looking for potential conflicts and interests in how you're getting compensated and how you're going about mitigating this. So be transparent about your compensation in your presentation as well as throughout the exam uh, and making sure that your disclosure documents reflect it properly. So Joe, a lot of people uh, have asked who should be making this presentation, who should be in the room, how many people is too much. Um, every firm that we deal with has a superstar salesman that can recite this uh, over and over and over again. Um, but in your opinion, what advice would you give to a client that is doing this for the first time of who should be giving this presentation and who should be in the room? Sure. So uh, again, this is not a sales call. The examiners want to hear from the individuals who run the firm. They want to ensure, so you should ensure that the person giving the presentation has a clear understanding of the business and the related risks. There are likely to be questions as you discuss each component. So you want someone who's knowledgeable of the business through and through. While it sets a good tone for the actual head of the firm to be involved in the presentation, uh, you don't want to sacrifice substance just for show. You know, having, a, having the head of a firm make the presentation, but an answer the questions will be, uh, will not play well with the examiners. Make certain that the present presenter is knowledgeable, uh, enough to follow up questions on each of the components. As always an exam, if you're not certain of the answer, you can inform the examiner that you'll verify the information before, um, so that you can ensure an accurate response. The better the under examiners understand the business, the more applicable their questions and document quests, uh, document quests are likely to be. The misunderstanding or confusion can lead to higher scrutin scrutiny and a more onerous exam for you. Thanks, Joe. I mean, that is great advice. That Thanks for dissecting that and going through it. First impressions, sometimes this is the firm's first impression with regulators and it means everything. So how you table the discussions going forward and present your business really can drive an exam on where it's going and how you interact with the exam staff. 